Welcome to Cogito Design, the video series where we take a deep dive into some of the cutting edge ideas within the tabletop game design industry. The Board Game Geek website has a fantastic list of game mechanics. At the time of writing, this list contains 182 different mechanics that are used in creating the over 100,000 tabletop games listed in their system. When selecting one, you can also see a list of the number of games which use that selected mechanic. For example, there are 2,681 games that utilise worker placement, 5,821 games that involve movement on a grid, and a whopping 13,122 games that have variable player powers. Today, I want to talk about one of the mechanics that, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated and underused in the tabletop industry. The old classic mechanic used to equalise the cutting of pizza and birthday cakes for millennia. I cut, you choose. After over 20 years of accumulating games on the Board Game Geek website, there are still only 45 games in their library that use this mechanic. So let me tell you why you should make number 46. I cut you choose as a mechanism is truly ancient. It is even referenced in the Bible, in the book of Genesis no less. Abraham and Lot both decide to divide up the land of Canaan amongst them. Abraham, being wise, draws a line through the land as equally as he can, and then allows Lot to pick either the east or the west of that line. This removes all possibility of envy, as Abraham is incentivized to draw the line evenly, so that no matter what side Lot chooses, the other is just as good. Lot himself is happy because he gets to choose from either portion, so can go for the one he thinks is best. In this case, the compromise works well, with both living happily ever after. Abraham settles in the western portion with places like Hebron and Shechem, and Lot and his wife settle the eastern portion with towns like Sodom and Gomorrah. Ah, maybe it didn't work out so well for Lot actually, particularly his poor salty wife. More recently, the United Nations still uses this mechanism for allocating areas of the ocean among countries. So, as it is so useful in solving disputes and so easy to understand being part of our cultural consciousness for thousands of years, why is this not used more often in board games? Well, before answering this question, we should first look at some of the reasons why this mechanic is potentially so useful. The legendary game designer Sid Meier once famously said that a game is just a series of interesting decisions. There is probably much more to games than this, but it is certainly true that interesting decisions are a crucial part of all good games. And this is particularly true on the tabletop, where we don't have fabulous AAA graphics and AI enemies to contend with. I Cut You Choose is an excellent and easy way to get some interesting decisions into your game design. To show this, let's look at an example. Hanami Koji by Kota Nakayama. This is a fantastic and simple two-player game which has only four actions, but a whole host of juicy decisions to contend with. Two of these four actions involve I Cut You Choose, and these are by far the most interesting parts of the game. In Hanami Koji, you are all bidding for resources to charm beautiful geishas into your tea room. This can be easily done, as geishas are apparently easily enticed by trinkets and tea. In one of the actions, you take four of your cards and divide them into two piles, containing two cards each. Your opponent picks one of these, and you get the option that remains. This is simple enough, but it actually creates two great moments of tension and decision in the game. Firstly, the act of dividing up the cards itself is an interesting one. All cards in this game are beneficial to players, and so you have to read the game and predict what your opponent will choose when creating these two options. Secondly, of course, your opponent has the decision of which option to choose. This is inevitably an interesting decision, as the mechanics of the game push you to make the two options as even as possible. So, with just one simple mechanic, you have two really interesting decisions using just one tiny cardboard token and four playing cards. In terms of sheer efficiency, compare that to the number of components some games need for their interesting decisions. There are also many different ways to approach the I Cut You Choose mechanic. Tussy Mussy by wingspan designer Elizabeth Hargrave is another interesting example. In this game, players choose two cards. They place one face down and the other face up in front of them. Their opponent gets to choose just one of these cards with the face down card remaining sight unseen. This leads to a really interesting psychological face off between players. 
Why have they placed that great card face up? Are they secretly hiding an even more fantastic card face down? Or are they just bluffing? Tussie Mussy creates interesting decisions and satisfying tension, all with minimal resources and rules. And Tussie Mussy does all this with just 18 cards. Another clear advantage of this mechanic is that it can really help increase player interactions without these interactions being negative. To divide the piles evenly in most games, you really do need to pay attention and care about what your opponent is doing and what resources they are searching for or path to victory they are focused on. I Cut You Choose can turn a dry game of multiplayer solitaire into something rich and involved where players are truly invested in the actions of their opponents. There are also some really interesting variations of this mechanic. In Isle of Sky, by Alexander Pfister and Andreas Pelican, we see more of an I price you choose mechanic, where players secretly price valuable tiles behind a screen in one phase, and then purchase tiles from any of the other players in the following phase. A similar mechanic is in the classic Castles of Mad King Ludwig by Ted Alsbach. In this game, one player each round takes the role of master builder, setting the prices of all the available castle rooms. The catch is that the master builder can only buy rooms after the other players. In both these games, setting the prices is an interesting decision, and then choosing from these options becomes another interesting decision. Sid Meier would be proud. It's just such a versatile and interesting mechanic. With all these clear and obvious benefits, why again has this gem of a mechanic made its way into so few tabletop games? Well, there are some reasons for that, but I also think they can be overcome. Firstly, as all people asked to cut the birthday cake in this way know, there is a slight disadvantage to the cutter. What if the cutting skills aren't up to scratch and you accidentally make one side too big? This disadvantages you, as the chooser will obviously just take the bigger slice. In the Hanami Koji example I gave earlier, it's much better to be the chooser than the cutter. There are, however, several ways to mitigate this in a game. The simplest approach is the one that Hanami Koji itself uses. Simply ask both players to be the cutter and the chooser at different points in the game. This evens out that slight imbalance of power whilst retaining the fun mechanic. Another approach is to remove the remainder from going to the cutter. This is something that we chose to do in our latest game, Philosophy of Floating World. This game is a fully simultaneous deck builder set in feudal Japan. In Floating World, you draw cards from your opponent's deck and then separate them into two piles containing an uneven amount of cards. Your opponent needs to pick one pile and then discard the other. This discarding of the other pile makes a big difference to the gameplay, as the cutter is no longer left with the remaining choice, just the satisfying act of dividing the cards. They themselves also get to be the chooser when two piles of cards are returned back to them. We have been really pleased with the response to this mechanic, as it is interesting and really makes players notice and care about the strategies of the people they are playing with. This approach also has the added benefit of being simultaneous, therefore eliminating player downtime. Another potential issue is that this works best with two players, but many games have player counts much higher. How can you utilise I Cut You Choose in a three or even a nine person game? This is a tricky issue, and in our opinion, it probably does work best if you can keep each of your eye cut you choose interactions to two people. But that being said, it is certainly not impossible to do well with more players. Interestingly, this problem extends beyond just tabletop games and into the world of pure mathematics. One of the best solutions was provided under very difficult circumstances. During the Second World War, the Polish Jewish mathematician Hugo Steinhaus was hiding from the Nazis and he used this time in hiding to create a wonderful solution to this problem known as the last diminisher. Imagine you are cutting a cake amongst three or more people. The first person cuts a slice, then the second person has a choice, either allow them to have that slice or cut some amount off the same slice. The third person has the same choice, to either allow the second person to have the new smaller slice or cut more off themselves. This continues until someone decides that the last person who cut the cake did so fairly. They take their slice and the process restarts with the remaining cake eaters. There is no incentive to cut a slice that is smaller than your fair share and no reason to allow a person to take more than theirs and thus all parties end up with even slices. It's a pretty brilliant solution but I've yet to see it incorporated into a board game nor would it keep your cake looking very pretty. Another and potentially simpler way to solve this problem is actually one we mentioned earlier, 
the I Price You Choose mechanic from Castles of Mad King Ludwig and from the Isle of Skye. Both have players pricing multiple resources and then creating a marketplace of many choices, which allows meaningful decisions for a wider number of players. If players create enough choices, then you will have a host of interesting decisions. This works particularly well if the players have enough information to make an informed decision, but not so much that they know everything. A final potential issue with this mechanic was given by Stonemaier Games owner and legendary game designer Jamie Stegmaier. He prefers to avoid having distinct rounds or phases in his games, as this helps players achieve what he terms as flow, where play is not broken up but continuously progresses from player to player until the game ends. This can certainly be an issue in some games, where you have to perform a large amount of tedious upkeep. So this criticism is something to bear in mind when using this mechanic, as it will often work best in games with phases, so you may lose some of that flow. That being said, this is not a requirement, particularly if you use the mechanic as the driving force of the game. Tussy Mussy, for example, has a clear flow to its gameplay, yet it still retains its I cut you choose goodness. So I would finish by urging you to start trying out this remarkable mechanic, but from what I can see I may be preaching to the converted. Of the 45 games in the I Cut You Choose category on BoardGameGeek, 20 of them, including our own, were released in the last year. So the gospel of I Cut You Choose is clearly beginning to spread, and I for one hope this continues. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in learning more about this mechanic, we've copied some useful links to resources we used when writing this video into the description. And if you found the video useful and you'd like to see more of them, then please consider liking and subscribing, which will be very much appreciated. Finally, creating these videos takes up a vast amount of time, from researching to writing and editing. So if you feel you got some value out of it, please consider donating to our Patreon account to help us make more. Thanks. Thank you.